Hi all, so this video is going to be looking at a bit of revision of the Poet D. H. Lawrence. Alright, so the way this is going to work is we're going to go through a number of the poems in, the, in just a quick overview of them. We're then going to look at some exam questions and how those each of those poems connects into the exam question. Okay, so to start off, just the questions that we're going to be looking at. Um, so sample questions because Lawrence hasn't actually come up on the leading search, so we only have possible sample questions. So first sample, discuss how Lawrence's rejection of poetic conventions and his keen eye for detail allowed him to create poetry that is simultaneously deeply personal and has a timeless relevance. Develop your response with reference to poetry of D.H. Lawrence on your course. And that seems like quite a complicated and long question, okay? We're going to see in a second, all we need to do is break it down to those key words, as we do with all of our uh, exam questions, and it makes the, it, the question seem much more approachable. The second question that we can look at is, one must learn to love and go through a good deal of suffering to get it. And the journey is always uh, towards the soul. To what extent do you believe this statement reflects the poetry of the H. Lawrence? So first thing we're going to do is each of these questions and we'll break it down to our key words. So in the first question, key words, rejection of poetic conventions. So this is looking at Lawrence as the father of free verse. We're looking at his keen eye to detail. Right? So he looks at things in a very, very detailed manner. And finally, poetry that is simultaneously personal and timeless. Okay, so if we break it down into those three different areas, it looks much more approachable than what it did. And you can see these are the three different things that we need to make sure we're uh, addressing in order to get the purpose. In our second question, it's a much briefer question, and sometimes that can seem a little bit more complicated in the fact that it's not, maybe it's not as easy to find what it's looking for, because every word is just that bit more um, important to discuss. Uh, so if we look at that question, the key words we're picking out here, one must learn to love, so that's our first key term, go through a good deal of suffering. So we can see just two key themes coming up here. We have the theme of love and the theme of suffering. And then he says, and the journey is always towards the soul. Okay, so that's going to be our third point. So each, uh, the purpose of this question, we need to talk, look about learning to love, going through suffering, and this being a journey towards the soul. And then you discuss to what extent you agree with that. Okay, so just remember with these exam questions, always looking for those key words or key terms, key phrases that make the question approachable and really tell you the purpose of what you're looking to achieve with the question. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the poem, Baby Movements to Trailing Clouds. So to start off with, Poem is about Lawrence. Lawrence wrote the poem about a baby girl of a couple that he lived with in August 1908. It's not his own child. Right? It is the couple who he's living with, their baby girl. But he was quite attached to, to, to the baby. The trading clouds part of the title refers to a Wordsworth poem, which was concerned about innocence and purity of children. So by having that quotation within his title, we know that this is going to be about innocence and purity of childhood. Okay, that's a theme that he's going to be looking through. And we also know that the baby movements too, it is part of a sequence of poems about this child. The key themes that come up in this poem are motherhood, we have love, we have innocence, and very much the burden of responsibility. He keeps talking about the bee hanging on the flower, and this burden of the mother and her the responsibility upon the mother. We have the imagery of that drenched bee, we have the bending flower, and we have the baby swaying. Okay, so if any of these kind of scenes and that imagery uh, aren't seeming familiar, you really need to go back and look over the poem in a bit more detail. Poetic features we can talk about in this poem are repetition. We have monosyllables in terms of his use of language, we have a lot of alliteration, and we have simile coming up. Okay, so a few key, uh, key quotations. Okay, this is what we always kind of people, students tend to worry about the most is what quotations am I going to have? We have as a drenched drowned bee, we have our liberation there and we have our simile. Uh, my sleeping baby hangs upon my life. There's our burden of responsibility and yet the motherhood 
and the love coming across as well. Draws down the bird and flower. Here they again, that bird and responsibility. We have the imagery of the flower, okay? And as the wings of a drenched drowned bee are a heaviness and a weariness, okay? So you'll see all that repetition coming through here. We have the flower image and we have the bee image coming up over and over again, all right? And the, symbol, the importance of the symbolism of these images. Moving on, our second poem that we're going to look at is called Into Debt. So, this is one of, poem, one of the poems which Lawrence wrote in response to the death of his mother. Okay, we know that he was quite close to his mother, and motherhood and parenthood can become very important themes if you're looking at Lawrence's poetry. Maybe not the key themes, but definitely something to discuss. The poem was originally called Elegy which is a name given to poems that lament the death. So that is what the poem is trying to do. It is lamenting. It is looking at lamenting the death of his mother. Lawrence uses striking images to reflect his feelings of having lost his mother here. So it's a grief poem. It's a, grief, it's a poem about trying to come to terms with the death of his mother. The themes we're looking at here, again, we have loss. So we've lost and death as very much key and uh, strong themes throughout a number of his poems. We also have that motherhood coming through as well, and we have connection with the world, that the world is connected in a kind of spiritual manner. The imagery here, we have the sky has come near, that is a great quotation from the imagery, and it's showing about how the world seems kind of smaller and more connected. We have the pigeon flying off the cathedral dome, okay, as tends to be the strongest image that stands out to people. In terms of poetic features, you should be looking at the simple expressions here, the colour imagery and the repetition. Okay, so repetition again coming up a lot with Lawrence. Key quotations, since I lost you my darling the sky has come near. Okay. Uh, the sound of her gently rustling in heaven like a bird I hear. As a pigeon lets itself off from a cathedral dome. Okay, so that is remember that idea of release from the dome and freedom. So I am tired my dear. Okay. So we have, you can see there's a um, certain element of rhyme coming across here as well. You know, it's not quite clear in the structure, how it falls in structure. But you can see the final lines that there is a bit of rhyme in these early work by Lawrence. Okay, but definitely key images coming across in this poem from repetition. Piano is a poem that people tend to remember quite well. Okay, it's a very, the title really helps us with the imagery of the poem with the child uh, underneath the mother playing piano. So, in terms of what the poem is about, it Lawrence describes an experience at the start of the poem where he is sitting and he's seeing a woman play play the piano, and this brings back memories of his mother, and he reflects upon the effect these memories were able to have on him. So, the fact that he sees this woman playing the piano and brings back memories of his mother kind of uh, interrupts his desire for the woman whilst he was somewhat attracted to her at the start. That is. Obviously, that is pushed away by the fact that he is pulled into a memory that he maybe doesn't want to experience. He's not wanting to think about his mother now, but he's dragged into that memory, and it kind of take, it takes away the allure of the woman for him. In terms of themes, we have nostalgia coming up here. We have inner conflict in that he is struggling to control his own emotions. The idea of man, of what it is to be a man, what a man should feel, and death coming up again. The imagery is quite clearly is the piano is very, very central. We have a woman playing piano in the bar, possibly probably the bar, and we have um, Lawrence sitting underneath the piano as his mother plays. We have a flood of memories. This is a key uh, aspect of his poem, is that he doesn't want to remember, he, he can't control the memories, I suppose the best way to put it across. The memories flood over him, he has no control, and there's a weeping in his poem. So again, it's lamenting a death, okay? We have the Sesora here, in terms of poetic features, we have a lot of onomatopoeia, in terms of bringing the musicality into the poem, and we have a soothing rhythm. So our key quotations when we're looking at this poem, a piano, and pressing the small poised feet of a mother who smiles as she sings. Okay, so you can see a bit of alliteration going on there, and you can see the image of the child on the piano. The insidious mastery of song betrays me back, there's this kind of um, inner conflict as he doesn't want to be dragged back into the memories. The glamour of childish days is upon me. My manhood is cast down. There's the issue of manhood and the effect of the nostalgia having on him that he can't control. 
finally I weep like a child from the past. And that really, I suppose, sums up a lot of what was going on in this particular poem. The Mosquito then is one of the poems that comes from uh, birds, beasts and flowers, so it's one of the nature poems. In the poem, Lawrence focuses attention on a detailed examination of the mosquito's movements and reflects upon the nature of its existence. So it's a really, really detailed poem here. It really goes into a very specific description of the mosquito. We know that the themes here, death comes up again as he kills the mosquito towards the end of the poem, and he contemplates the reason for its existence. There is definitely a respect for nature. Okay? Lawrence has a huge respect for nature, even though the mosquito does die. And there's a detailed observation, and this is something we see coming up more and more with Lawrence, is this really close, detailed observation of the world. The imagery is the magic of the mosquito. You see, he, he allows his imagination to uh, kind of guide his observation. There's the issue of the blood. Okay, the mosquito sucking blood, and then it is a smear of blood. And there's the uh, repetition of winged victory, and its reference to uh, the uh, architecture or the statue from the past, from the um, Greek and Roman times. The poetic features you're looking at here is a lot of repetition, there's questioning, and there's a detailed observation. Really detailed observation is something you definitely need to be looking at here, and the idea of questioning that he is kind of going through and questioning the world around him, and it's a, it's a poem of discovery about nature. And the key quotations you might take from Mosquito, and there's quite a lot of them here, just because it is quite a long poem, and it's up to you, I suppose, you might not be, you might not want to look at this many quotations from one poem, but it's hard to bring such a, such a detailed poem into a smaller number of quotations, it's up to you to make your own kind of choices. We start down, we go clockwise, we start with the blue one. How can you put so much devilry, devilry into that translucent phantom shred of a frail corpus? Okay. Questioning there, okay. questioning nature, a very detailed translucent phantom shred. Eyeing me sideways and cunningly conscious that I am aware you speck. Tone is really important here as well. Blood, red blood, super magical, forbidden liquor. Okay, somewhat getting into the mind of the mosquito here, possibly. Okay, just seeing the blood as liquor. Okay, and definitely the red imagery is really important. For a second, in spasms in oblivion, obscenely ecstasy, the sucking live blood. A huge amount of detail in here as he really pays close attention to the movements of the mosquito. Are you sorry? Are you one too many for me? Winged victory. Uh, this is a respect to an extent, even though there is an opposition to the mosquito, he respects the mosquito. And queer, what a big stain my sucked blood makes, beside the infinitesimal faint smear of you. Right? And again, even though the, uh, the mosquito is now nothing more than a smear, it is his he contemplates it. He doesn't just kill it and get it, forget it. There's a contemplation about the meaning of the mosquito that's really important to acknowledge here. Hummingbird is another one of our poems that really looks at nature. The important thing to know about Hummingbird is that Lawrence had never actually seen a hummingbird when he wrote it. So this is a poem of imagination. He is imagining what's going on. Uh, he imagines what the existence of the bird at the very earliest times of history. The themes coming up here, we're looking at imagination, we're looking at creation, individuality, and again, even though we haven't seen the bird, there is a close detail in this description. The imagery of the slowness versus speed, we have time, we have size, all coming up very much how he discovers the world, so again, it's kind of a discovery of nature. And poetic features, there's humour in here. You should be able to find the humour in Lawrence's work. You should be able to pick that out. It is, the, it is, it is in there, you can a bit more difficult to kind of find. And there is the short vowels and hard consonants being put up against long vowels with short consonants. Okay, so if you're not sure about that, you need to go back and look at notes on poems specifically. You know, you need to go into detail on the poem to get what I'm going on with there. And there's a lot of active verbs, a lot of movement from the hummingbird. So you'll see some of those uh, techniques coming out quite a bit coming across in these quotations. I can imagine in some other world, primeval dumb. There's his imagination, okay? 
my imagination hugely important to Lawrence, and went whizzing through the slow, vast, succulent stems. You see this choice of language here, okay? We have that uh, active verb, went whizzing. We have that slow, vast, succulent stems flowing from the sound at the same time. Probably he was big as mosses and little lizards, they say, or as, li as mosses and little, li little lizards, they say, were once big. Here is he's trying to contemplate what the world was once like, and it's not really important if he's scientifically correct or not, it's more just coming to an understanding of the place of everything in nature. We look at him through the wrong end of a long telescope of time, luckily for us. There's a bit of humour coming in, it's a light-hearted poem. He's not trying to be overly serious here, he's just contemplating things and creating a beautiful imagery to what he's doing. What have they done to you? Okay. A poem that looks at social critique, which we don't maybe don't see too much from Lawrence. So what have they done to you examines the, What have they done to you examines the industrialization in Britain? Lawrence critiques the work of factories for tearing people away from their natural instincts and questions what these developments offer in return. So, you know, he's, Lawrence grows up in, or sorry, lives in a time when the world is becoming increasingly, increasingly industrialized, okay, and much more urbanized, and he is critiquing, he's questioning what, is this a good thing or not? So, it seems we have in, the idea of individuality and industrialization come up. Does industrialization take away the individuality of workers does a pity here that he pities people he pities those who are not being given the opportunity to maybe develop intellectually and imaginatively as he does the imagery of the machinery okay the factories is very very strong just the goggling eyes okay showing that he, he believes that the um, industrialization is perhaps changing people's worldview and the boarding school brain all right even schooling is becoming too systematic, it seems, in his opinion. The poetic features here are questioning questions quite a lot here. There's a lot of repetitions. There's a semi-bitter tone. There's definitely a sense of unhappiness about what's going on. And there's some very, to say, uh, use of long lines within the poem, just to maybe discuss things in a bit more detail. Um, the boarding school brain, sorry, just to go back to that. Um, we can see that he's, he sees the, he's not against education as such, it's the form of education that he's maybe taking here, and that it's not promoting creativity and imagination that he may possibly think is more relevant. A few quotations. What have they done to you, men of the masses? Right? Easy quotation to learn, okay, re and really brings up together that this, you know, it'll help you to keep in mind he is talking about what the world, the industrialization is doing to the general public. Devoured you with the machine, the vast maw of iron. There we have that harshness, right? that maw of iron. Right? Beautiful sounds there to get that harshness across, and a real, a great image of the kind of demonizing, demonizing effect, view of industrialization. They took away your man's native instincts and intuitions. That essentially captures his critique. And a boarding school brain stuffed up with the halfpenny press. Okay. critiquing the, what people may be reading, the views that people are having, the lack of critical thinking and imagination. And then finally on to my favourite poem by Lawrence and that's Bavarian Gentians. So this poem was written by Lawrence as he was dying and reflects upon the prospect of death. Lawrence draws heavily on the myth of Persephone in this poem. If you are not aware of Persephone, you definitely need to go and learn it. Some of you might know from Poland, looking at the pomegranate. And um, in this moment, there is a kind of reference to Persephone slightly there. The theme here is death, dying, and myth. He brings the three together. He's contemplating his own death and coming to a sense, an understanding of his mortality. So it's a new, even though he's discussed death many times in his poem, this is a kind of, it's a more personal because it's his own death. You know? The imagery of the blue darkness, the living darkness, so looking at the prospect of dying in a different kind of imagery in different colours. The torches, uh, as the Bavarian uh, Gentians are described as torches, and just you should have a good image of what the Bavarian Gentians themselves look like. 
Uh, poetic features, there's a trance-like quality, there's illusion, very, very important you refer to the illusion to the perception in it here, and the colour imagery really stands out. You know, it's hard to think about this poem without seeing those beautiful dark blue flowers. Key quotations down from Bavarian gentians. Not every man has gentians in his house. Um, torch, flowers, blue smoke and darkness. Pluto's dark blue blaze. Right. Listen to the sounds and listen to the alliteration going on there. Both the sounds. Down the darker and darker stairs where blue is darkened on blueness. Down the way Persephone goes. Right. Illusion and a great use of repetition in there. Give me a flower on a tall stem and three dark flames. Okay, beautiful imagery coming across here is what is looking at what the flowers themselves represent. Okay, so we went through a number of poems there and we went through them quite quickly. If you're unsure of any of those poems, you really do need to go back and look at them in detail, okay? If you're okay with everything we've kind of discussed, then you know, just make sure you have a good understanding of each of those poems in detail and you're not just kind of yeah, okay, I kind of remember that. You should be able to have a discussion about everything that I've talked about there. The sample questions we looked at at the start, we said the key words were rejection of poetic invention, uh, keen eye for detail, and poetry that's simultaneously deeply personal and timeless relevance. And then the second question, one must learn to love, suffering, and soul. So if we look at the question one, poetic inventions, I mean, key eye for detail, and poetry has simultaneously deeply personal as a time to relevance. So piano, how are we going to bring this in? We can look at his use of the maybe rejecting convention in terms of the imagery going on and the discussion of sexual attraction being just dampened by or destroyed by the memory of his mother. It's keen eye for detail that image of him under the piano is so so clear here. Um, and poetry is simultaneously deeply personal. You know, there, it couldn't be more personal, really. It's a memory of his mother who's deceased. Um, but it, it can still stand out to us. People still look to and appreciate the musicality of the poem. And the, um, you know, the, this emotion is something that everyone will probably experience in their lives. The mosquito, here in terms of convention, you know, he's playing around a lot with his use of poetry and form and structure of the poem detail, you know, just can't get much more detailed. I think it would be hard to get much more detailed description of the mosquito and, you know, even looking at Fink's mirrors, ecstasy movements and sucking into blood. The poetry is simply deeply personal. It is his, you know, it's a personal journey for him in there, in his understanding and the time is relevant. So, you know, we all, he, he talks about experiences, we've all had an appreciation of nature at some point. Hummingbird, again, you have that keen eye for detail. You have his imagination just playing around with trying to understand things that maybe he doesn't have a true experience with. Okay, and in terms of how he uses his imagination to discuss and explore something that he doesn't understand is perhaps against the expectations of what we might have at the time that he's doing. His description is so out there, perhaps. Uh, Bavarian gentians, we see a rejection of rhyme. We're into free, we're into really into free verse here with Bavarian gentians. The detail that goes into that description of those flowers, the pure detail, is you know brings the beauty to the poem. And you have that personal because it is himself, and he talks about his you know romantic relationships in there as well, but brings the timeless relevance through his use of illusion to Persephone. And finally, call into debt, we have, um, you know, we can look at how his, comparing this, uh, looking at how his poetic style has changed from the early poems into the later poems. You have the detail there of, of the Pigeon Cathedral Dome, and you have the, that kind of cathedral imagery is very much a image that could be, you, it's a common image, it's a image that we'd see a lot in paintings and nowadays in movies as a representation of that. Uh, must learn to love, go through the suffering and towards the soul. So love is quite clear and his struggle with different forms of love and memory. You know, he wants the, just the sexual allure of the one time piano and then just the learning to grieve over the death of his mother. 
There's a good deal of suffering that is quite clear in grief, this is an elegy. And towards the soul, there's definitely a spiritual sense in the on piano. In very Gentians, we can look at the, you should have a good understanding of the um, story of Persephone here and the different interpretations of perhaps Persephone wanting to be in the underworld of Pluto. Um, and then connecting, you can connect some of those ideas in with what, uh, Lawrence's own personal relationship. A good deal of suffering, you know, he, it's about his own death. Um, and then we have Towards the Soul, it's again, it's his understanding of his mortality coming through here. Call into Death, we're again, once again looking at the death of his mother, suffering in terms of grief, and his understanding of the meaning of existence. Uh, baby Movement is very much something about a poem about learning to love and the mother learning to love as a mother and a child learning to love as a loved parents. The suffering there is the burden that the mother has to bear in terms of raising her child and caring for her child. Towards the soul you feel a sense of her becoming a complete person. Finally, what have they done to you? This is um, learning, learning to love in terms of a more social sense, the suffering of society and community and uh, general population at the hand of industrialization and he feels that society is perhaps losing its soul because of this.